If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record, edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey guys, it's your girl Twinka from Twinka's Movie Club. So I have here today with me Twin. Yo. And we are going over Rent a Pal. So for Rent a Pal, this movie was a um it was a random pick. So yeah, just looking for like some kind of thriller, something different. And I ran across that. So that's why um that movie was selected for the month. Um, so the writer and director was John Stevenson. The release date was September 2020. And pretty much the movie is about a guy named David. Um, he is searching for love. So he's using a online service in order to, you know, help him find his perfect match. However, um, during the process of finding that match, he finds a VHS tape in which um, it's like he finds the best friend. So he pretty much starts to get overwhelmed by this new best friend from this tape. And he kind of do the unthinkable towards the end. All right. So what, um, Twin, what do you think about this movie? It's goddamn ridiculous. <laughs> It, it really is. It really is. I mean, this movie, and I I can't say nothing too bad because I am a writer and want to be director, you know. But this movie is it kind of kind of pissed me off. It was a little slow, which I don't mind. But from the beginning, this dude was bound to be a psychopath. It was bound to be a psychopath. It was no if ands or buts about it. And the course of this movie progressed to him for him to like kill certain people and um just do stupid stuff that a psychopath would do. <laughs> so uh, I mean it was bound for it. It was no if ands buts about it. I watched the movie for like five five minutes. I'm like, oh, he's gonna definitely catch a body in this. So, David was looking for love. Man. So oh. let, let me ask you this. Have you ever used a dating service or app to meet someone? Well, it's 2020. We all have used a, a dating site, whether it's Tinder, whether it's Facebook got a dating service now, whatever the fuck it is, everybody uses a dating site. But this is, I guess it's based in the 19, I want to say 80s or something like that. What? I'm not really I'm sure. I'm sure probably early 90s. Well, okay, probably early '90s or something like that. But they use it. He using a. It's not an online service. It's a VHS dating site. So he has to physically go up there, pick up, drop off his DVD. Uh, his damn. Well, I'm about to say DVDs, <laughs> <laughs> but because the damn shit wasn't DVDs. It's, he drop off and record his VHS of himself or his profile, and then pick up other VHSs from for females that kind of that he want to match with and stuff like that. And then he has to pay for them. He has to pay for these. Uh, to, in order to get matches, you got to pay for these VHSs to see if you match with that person. It's, but, it's ridiculous. But you know love is very expensive. It costs a lot of money to be in love and Bro, also that's, find love. That's before you even go on the fucking date. <laughs> that's before the date at all. You ain't even pay for the date. You pay to meet her. It might as well be a damn prostitution service. Okay, okay. So, what was your worst online date then? When I got fucking catfished, of course. <laughs> I don't think nobody has been on a dating site that they didn't get catfished. Wait, wait. I've never been catfished, but please do tell. I need some details. I mean, <laughs> I ain't much details to say. I, I went there, and it wasn't the girl that I thought she was. I mean, <laughs> fuck. 
<laughs> she was a whole nother person. So what did you do? Do you leave? No, I ain't fucking leave. I mean, so the girl, she, um, she had a profile and she tried to make herself look like a top 10. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like one of the baddest females ever, you know, nice body, nice face, all this makeup, blah, 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 blah. And I get there and she wasn't a 10. The well, motherfucker was probably like a six. A six? That's okay, though, right? It, yeah, it was okay. It wasn't bad. I didn't leave. Well, I'm just saying, she didn't have to do all that shit. So, I mean, I still stayed and we talked and all that shit, but I ain't hit her back afterwards because <laughs> obviously her ass cannot be trusted. Oh, my God. Well, I'm thankful that I've never been catfish. Everybody I've met online has pretty much looked how they portray them you know i'm lying i'm lying i've been catfish once oh, like you just thought about it yes show. i just thought about it so i met this guy and me and my friend we went up we still been going to the beach together so me and my friend uh we drove up to meet this dude and we're gonna meet and then we're gonna go to the beach you know all together whatever so when we drove there to meet him this guy was like super freaking short like really short. What? Wait, did he look like his picture? He looked like his picture, but he was just short. So, so he ain't catfish you. No, but he should have told me his height. Like I'm okay. So for those who don't know me, I'm like five seven. Okay, this dude had to be like five foot, and I'm like I can't. Like that's just that's too much of it. I like to look up to my man. I'm sorry. That's not a catfish. It was because he could have portrayed that he was like a you know short. That's that's still not. I don't think that's catfish because he looked like his picture. If he looked like his picture, if he didn't like <laughs> edit his pictures or well, everybody is say pictures nowadays. But if he didn't put a picture of somebody else and replace for his own picture, I mean, you didn't get catfish. He just didn't mention how short he was. <laughs> so that technically, that's not a catfish. So a mission of the truth is a okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. You didn't lie. You just you just oh. said tell the whole story. If you didn't ask, if you like to look up your at, at your man or something like that, maybe you don't think that's something you should put on the dating site. Man, whatever, whatever. He should know. I'm like I'm five seven, so like okay, she's a tall female. Well, you didn't say you was five seven. And you didn't ask how tall he was, so I'm why would he mention? I'm that sure man my height was short. up there. I'm sure it was up there. That man know he's short, <laughs> and he he liked to look up, obviously, because he, either he gonna find somebody exactly his size, or he gonna find somebody <laughs> taller. <laughs> if he does, damn short. But I think he realized like after I met him that. I was kind of disappointed because he didn't go to the beach with us. Um, he just told us direction to the beach because, like, we had drove to meet him, like, another town. So he just gave us direction to where the beach was. So me and my friend, he was like, okay. We just drove ourselves to the beach. So yeah. it was kind of weird. You'd be surprised how often that happens. The dude meet a female, especially online. You meet somebody, and you go automatically tell whether they into you or not. And you're like, all right. Fuck this! <laughs> like, <laughs> like she she ain't fucking with me, so I'm been let let her go. <laughs> that's how that shit happens, bro. Oh, that's horrible. All right, what? Well, All right, yeah. so back to back to little David in this movie. Yeah, with fucking David, <laughs> fucking little psychopath. So oh. who who do you think was so uh, while David was talking to his friend? So when he got the tape. He started talking to Andy, his new friend from the Renapal little VHS series. Um, who do you think was calling Andy? Because while they were talking, the phone kept ringing. He was like, oh, it's no one. I'll hang up. Like, who do you think he was calling Andy? Well, to go back a little bit, David wasn't into this guy at first. He thought it was all bullshit, you know, and after a while, he started to get into him mm -hmm. uh, for a little bit. And he played I believe the VHS was trying to play tricks on somebody, you know, like who who has to rent a pile? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to rent somebody. So you've never been lonely? Yeah. Like but, you want to talk to somebody? Yeah, but I'm not going to be friends with somebody on the damn VHS <laughs> tape that's on the TV screen. That's out playing like they actually talking to me. Right, that is right. insane. I feel you. That okay. is insane. 
<laughs> so while David's sitting here watching this dude and this dude ca- acting like he talking to him and acting like he kind of relate to him, I was like, yeah, I've been there before, but not mentioning the place that David just said, yeah, I've been there before. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, oh, moms are tough and all this stuff like that. What if, this, what if he been a dude that didn't grow up with his mom? You know what I'm saying? Like myself. I grew up with my, uh, my dad and my stepmom. What, what if he didn't meet his mom? You know what I'm saying? I ain't grow with my actual mother. Wow. So it, it's a whole it's a whole different it's a whole different story. Like is this Rita Pal shit, this VHS tape is not gonna relate to everybody, everybody's situation. And this dude was sitting here faking, acting like he actually <laughs> talking to David, and then like to to your question, to the where the phone fucking rings, he's trying to he and he just hangs up and puts the phone down or whatever, whatever. Picking up and put it down, like, <laughs> oh, I don't know why they keep interrupting us. He's just trying to make it seem like, oh yeah, I'm giving you all my attention. So this shit was a whole fucking trick in itself. So yeah. you think his rental power was tricking him? I think so. I ain't thinking he tricking him into doing the stuff that David ended up actually doing because <laughs> David's fucking a maniac. First of all, but David was a good guy at first. That Andy ruined him. Man, David was Andy up. poisoned his brain, yo. Andy did, how can a man on the TV screen poison your damn brain? I don't get that. Because he brainwashed him. Because, okay, so Andy was lonely and he just wanted some companionship. I mean, not Andy, sorry. David. David was lonely. He just wanted some companionship. So when he got the VHS tape, he met Andy and he didn't and, meet Andy. Well, Andy met him, and it seemed like Andy actually inquired about him. So it wasn't the fact that he, I mean, of course he knew the tape was fake, but it was the fact that the, the you know, the tape had questions that, you know, and it had a little pause section so he could answer it and, you know, whatever. So he felt like he was connecting to it. But do you feel like Andy was real? Or do you feel like it really was just a straight VHS tape and he was just crazy and he needed a check bro <laughs> and he needed a goddamn check that's why he recorded that shit in, in the first place and he needed a check that's it that's it bro there ain't nothing about andy is real he's sitting there faking this whole fucking relationship Wait, the whole time do you think andy is the same andy from child's play child's play uh-huh chucky because he was always going after well, that kid that kid was- <laughs> That kid was fucked up too, so it might be. It then what it could have been. Does a girl version of like, Andy? I'm your friend. Right. It was like we're buzz, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> You're my best bud. Brings to the end. Uh, Brings to the fucking end until you fucking pull a knife to your throat. Fuck out. <laughs> it could be the same Andy. That Chucky fucked up Andy <laughs> in the first place. So this Andy could have been much different. So see, he out here giving what happened to him to the world. Fuck out of here! But he manipulated little David. Is, fucking Chucky started killing people and started trying to kill Andy. And and now Andy putting that same negative energy <laughs> on everybody else. Exactly. See? Man, don't, man, don't put that devil on me. Oh my goodness! This some fucking bullshit. All right. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, okay. I'm going off. I'm going <laughs> off right now. Bro. This movie pissed me off. All right. Well, have you ever had a friendship that would take that you would take their calls over your girlfriends? What, like I I get a phone? Well, I'm on the phone with my girlfriend or some shit like that, and I get a phone call for one of my friends. Yeah, because you know, like in the movie, Andy. Um, so in the movie, David had the little date. And then Andy got jealous. And Andy was like, oh, you choosing her over me? You know, in a sense or whatever. So where if you were, let's say you had little homeboys or whatever. Um, and they're like, yo, you spend a lot of time with this girl. Like, would you address that? Like, what would you say to that? Well, like I well, speaking from a male perspective, because I know that's why you asked me this question. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's. It's tough. It depends on how much you like this girl and how much time y'all should be spending together. Because it comes a time where sometimes, yes, you're going to have to pick your girl over your homies. Like, it comes a time with that. But how often? Every time? Or is it like 
every other time. Like, how does that work? I mean, sometimes if you got, it depends on who you got plans with. You know what I'm saying? If you got plans with your girl mm -hmm. and your homies, uh, homies call you, you like the day before or the day of or whatever, and they was like, "Yeah, we finna go here, go here." No, 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 we're not. We're not finna go anywhere because I got plans with my girl, and I can't, I can't do her like that. Will you tell your uh, boys that? Huh? Will you tell them that? Yes, I would. Me personally, hmm. but I'm a different kind of dude. I'm just saying. But so I would, I would tell my boys that you can't, you can't, I can't sit there and uh, choose you of uh, your spontaneous plans. And when I got plans with my girl, especially if I've been with her for a while, you know what I'm saying? So oh. what if, what if you've been with her for, cause in this case, David had met Lisa. So they went on the first date. So what if it's just the first date? Like you only been on the first date. So you cancel your second date. Yeah. Yep. He can't, cause in this movie, he canceled the second date. Now, going off of the movie, I see, uh, I seen his reaction to to Lisa, which is like the girl that he got interested in. Mm -hmm. It seemed like he's really interested in. Her. They were perfect. Yeah, they they was to me they was a perfect match. Mm -hmm. They was a perfect match, and he really really liked her. Mm -hmm. So him choosing the fucking guy <laughs> on the VHS tape over. Your, your your girl that you probably see a future with is ridiculous to me. How you choose to sit there and play cards with a guy on the TV screen rather than go out with a girl with the girl of your dreams? That don't make sense. Because I think if, he was thinking about loyalty. Because um, loyalty to who? You don't know <laughs> this. this is, he's a guy on the screen. Now, see, it's different when somebody like I, my actual friends. That I know that I've seen in person and actually hung out with before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But this is just a guy on the screen that you chose over this girl that could possibly be the girl of your dream. But during his loneliest hours, the only person that was there for him was Andy. <laughs> and I and he felt like Andy is so real. He felt like they really connecting. So it's like, Andy, I have plans with you. You know what? Bump Lisa. Like, I'll see Lisa later. <laughs> Man, I don't know. I might be thinking too like, oh, and, and the fact that that he's sitting there and Andy, he's watching Andy and all this shit. And they, they got VHS tapes. Remember, they ain't got no fucking cell phones because mm -hmm. they use pay phones and all this shit. And fucking Andy pulls out a fucking cell phone to take a selfie. <laughs> that shit fucking killed me. Obviously, this man ain't real. Like, what is that in your hand, bro? This is the fucking early 80s, or late future. 80s, early 90s. How, no, that wasn't a Polaroid. I was born in 87. That wasn't a Polaroid. Wait, let me think. When I okay, so I no, had a cell he had phone. an iPhone in his hand. He had, iPhone. That that looked like an iPhone to me. Uh. He had an iPhone in his hand, <laughs> and he literally took a selfie. Like, bro, come on, and you fall for this. And this man sitting there, you meet the girl of your dreams, and the first thing you want to do is go home and tell your little TV screen pal about this female. And then he was like, oh, she be coming, coming between us already and all this shit like that. Bro, you are insane. This man is crazy. <laughs> David is fucking nuts. David is fucking nuts. He's nuts. I, I mean, I don't know. Come on, man. Like, like I said, David just wanted a friend, and he met Andy first. And he didn't want to, I feel like he didn't want to um, make Andy feel less wanted just because he met a woman. Because when he didn't have anybody, Andy was there. Wait. So he wanted to like maintain that loyalty. However, he, no, I, I don't agree with David because he was extreme. Because I'm like, you just found the love of your life. Like, you're not going to marry your friends. You want to marry the love of your life. Like you just found somebody that completely matched you, that understands you. And that's the hardest thing in life is finding somebody to understand you. And he found somebody that connected with him. And instead of him wanting to pursue that person, he was willing to try to continue to pursue that friendship with his little rental pal. Uh, but how you keep loyalty to somebody on a fucking TV screen? Well, like you said, he would look cray cray, you know. He would just okay. Let's let's bring this real. Now, this is is uh, what's the word? 
I don't know. It's it's fate. Okay, I ain't talking about the movie. I'm talking about just David's relationship <laughs> with this VHS tape. He know he doesn't have a friend mm -hmm. without a VHS tape that continues to play over the same thing over and over again. The best so, type of friend. So <laughs> they don't switch up. You know exactly. Where you word. know exactly what it's going <laughs> to say. And early in the movie, he didn't know what he was going to say, but later on, he learns exactly what he's going to say. So he learned, uh, he learned like the certain responses to his questions and how long to keep talking before Andy starts talking to keep it like a real conversation and all that stuff like that. But Andy is not real. He doesn't exist without this VHS tape. Like when his, his mom messed up and um, started cutting up the tape, he went off on it. And, and and hit her ass <laughs> like <laughs> put her ass on the ground over a VHS tape or and, and a friend Wait, that's not even real. No, but didn't Andy call like the house phone or something? I'm trying to remember. I think he called the house phone though. Andy didn't call no damn house phone. Andy is not real. <laughs> so why would you blow off real people for somebody that's not real? He got caught up in it, and the only people I could see getting caught up in it are goddamn psychopaths. You know, he, like I said, he was just a lonely man. So, okay, let's think about it. Andy was taking care of his mother. Now, if you were in a position where you had an elder, you you know, you had an elder parent and they started to, I, I believe his mother had like. Um, Dementia, I think. Right, right, right. So if you had a parent in that situation. Now, remember, David has to stay with her full time. And when he went on his date, he had to send her to like a little care facility while on that date. Mm -hmm. So she needs full time attention. Like he yep. can't even have a job. Yeah, he didn't even have a job. Um, right. They say they're living off of her like, social, social security. security. Right. Yeah. Would you pretty much downgrade your life to do that for a parent? Yeah, I would for my parents. You would? For my parents, yeah. Because they did everything for me. I'm sorry, Pops, but I'm going to find you the best rest home ever. I can't do it. Man, I got to I I, Well, I got to talk to my parents and see if why they still could talk and do all this uh, and No, no, no. Mind. Ain't no talking because but, he didn't know his mom about to go about to, you know start no, losing but you got, memories you got, and that's stuff. Some, you don't think that's something you got to ask your parent before they start get dementia and it sets in and they but, start going crazy. Do you want me to put my life on pause to take care but, of you? But that's what I'm saying. But let's say you didn't have the conversation. You would volunteer and do it because you got to think about it. Look at David. David could not date. He, could, he couldn't even work. Oh, he, fucking, he couldn't even make his own money. No, he fucking dated. I he mean, dated. he went out on that one date. That was the one date. He and went, and the, to, to the point mm -hmm. of the movie, he dated and not only did he date, the girl was a perfect match because she's a caregiver as well. Mm -hmm. So she understood exactly what the fuck he was going but, through. But do you so they would have been a perfect match. So mm -hmm. he could have had basically the girl of his dreams. Right. The girl of his dreams. She would have she came over there when his mom walked out the front door and she got lost. And who'd he call? He called Lisa. Lisa came, oh, right? Lisa helped him. Mm -hmm. Lisa uh, drove around with him and his mom, put his mom to bed. She understood and then, that. And she understood. Right. So if you find somebody that understood your situation. Let me be for real. We talking about 2021. Do you really feel that if you went on a dating site or dating at whatever the case may be, and you told a female, hey, I'm living at home with my one of my parents. They, you know, they got some disabilities. I don't work. I'm living off their social security. That's paying all the bills, but I'm looking for love. Do you really feel that a female will respond to you seriously? Well, first of all, <laughs> no, no. I'm first, first of all, <laughs> I'm just saying. Think about David. No, David was in a he was between no. a rock and a hard spot, okay. Bo. So, David again, again, <laughs> once again, for the hundredth time, David is a fucking psychopath. No. And obviously, David has not been in many relationships with females before this point. How can so he? He was no helping way. his mama. No, I would. You think I would sit there and tell a female that I live with my mama? No, my mama live with me, but dog. No, <laughs> like, oh, but no. he do live with his mama though. He no, just she being honest. Me. Yeah, she live with David, oh, but my. If mama, if my dad and my mom live with me, they live with me. They, I don't live with them. They live with me. Yeah, I get that check. 
Yeah, but they give that money to me so I could take care of them. Whatever, and I ain't got to worry about whatever, shit. Whatever, whatever. You know what he what don't, because he would be honest. Now, would you ever expect your child to be your caregiver? So if the shoe was on the other foot and you were Andy's, I keep calling him Andy. If you was David's mother, would you expect your child to put their life on hold? Everything. Because like I said, this man can't work. He really, to be honest, he really can't find true love. Uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because not everybody's going to accept that. Because you got to think about it. If I meet a man and you're telling me you got to take care of your elder mother, you live in, you can't work, you can't do nothing. So I'm looking at that as, okay, so that means in this relationship, I got to provide everything. And honestly, I cannot have your 100% attention because you got to be with your mother 24-7. Yeah. So I got to make her a part of my life. Well, you answer that question because you got more kids than I, I do. So, would you want your kids to take care of you if you get old and, and get dementia and all that shit? Nah, bro. My my thing would be, I don't want I don't want them to feel that I'm a burden to them. Like I understand that they may feel like honor, like I want to take care of my mom, all this stuff. But my thing is, I want you to go live your life because me growing up, I didn't have to take care of no parent. So I don't know what that feels like. So fuck it. Throw your ass in the Yeah, because I mean, because I'm already losing my mind. Because my thing would be, yeah, I don't want you to put your life on hold to, like, take care of me. And, I mean, I understand. I mean, I don't know. Like, I I don't want them to do it. Like, just let me, just put me somewhere nice. Like, come visit me. Don't don't just (laughs) forget me now. Come visit me. Make make sure I'm somewhere nice. Come, You know, make sure I'm being treated well. But I don't want to be a burden to them because I want them to have the same life I had. I want them to be able to go freely and not feel burden. burden. Yeah. Right. Well, I I get my answer is the same. Uh, you know, I only got one kid, so I don't uh, f- so far. So I don't want my daughter to feel burdened with me. I want I don't want to stop her life. You know what I'm saying? And that's technically what he's doing with his mom. You know what I'm saying? And he resents her for that. Exactly. You, you that's why that that's why he pushed her down the stairs. Because it's it's just to the point where it's like he just had well, enough. Well, she, she first of all, she she's needs 24 hour care, pretty much. And then she caught him in the in the in his in the little basement. He was jerking off. And she started going <laughs> off on him. And she can't remember his name. She only remembers the other son. No, the so, husband. I think it was the husband, Frank. For, Frank, I thought Frank was the brother. No, Frank the husband. Because he was like, I'm not dead. <laughs> no, I think, I definitely think. Frank no, was. Frank is the husband, bro. I'm telling you, well, Frank is the husband. Uh, okay, that's debatable. But <laughs> anyway, she she doesn't, she barely remember him. She, I think it was what, one or two times in the movie that she actually called him by his real name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to cause my daughter grief. Mm-hmm. Over taking care of me, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, fucking throw my ass in the home, you know what I'm saying? Go live your life, go do you because I'm I'm not I'm not here to burden you, you know what I'm saying? I was here to to raise you, make your life better, you know, put you in the right position so you could do the right things and have a great post uh, preposterous life, not preposterous, but <laughs> <laughs> we making new words, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, for you could posture in life, you know what I'm saying? Right. You have a good life. That's what I was here for. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want I want to be a burden on you, just like you don't want to be a burden on your kids. So yeah, put my ass in the home. I don't want to be a burden. That's it. But he felt felt the need to take care of her. Well, and be- I can't fault him for that either. Though. Right, because that's because they she lost her husband, he lost his father, and so he feels that. You know, he wants to take the role of being the man of the house. And and that kind of goes with how you raise your kids. You know, you raise your kids like, okay, you're supposed to be, if your father not here, you're the man in the house. So I feel like that's what he feels like. He's taking over that role, but it's really killing him inside well, no. because he's losing his true identity. No, because he, he feels like I feel. You feel like you, you owe your parents something. You know what I'm saying? And if I could call my dad right now and he'd tell me, he's like, boy, you don't owe me shit. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like I do because I know what my dad did in order to raise me. I know all the shit that he gave up in order to raise me right. You know what I'm saying? But that what counts with 
having kids. Yes. When you have a child, you know that the way you are living life, you can no longer live that way. That that's just a part of having a child. No, but he, my dad gave us shit that uh, I don't feel like he had to give up. But you know, back in back in the early eighties, early uh, late eighties, early nineties, he had to he needed money, and he was a single father at the time, and all that shit. So he had to give up certain things in order for him to raise me. That man made serious sacrifices that a lot of parents didn't make because some people give give their kids up. I mean, that's especially true. men. I mean, but th that's true. But that's what happened when you have kids. Like, it's just part of the thing. Like, there's so many women who has a child and they can't finish college or they can't do anything else because at this point, their main concern is I need to make sure my kid is okay. Right. So I got to put all this shit on hold. Right. right. But, but can we really say that's a sacrifice because you chose to make that child? Because abortion, I mean, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm not here to be an argument of pro-life or pro-choice, but I'm saying there's so many ways to prevent from having a child. So yeah. you made this baby. Are you, could you, can you really call the decision you make afterwards a sacrifice? No, I mean, the difference between a mother raising a child, like a, a mother is attached to that baby. From from day one, since conception, as soon as she find out that she present pregnant, that she's automatically attached to that baby. Mm -hmm. This is different than a male like my father who sacrificed everything to raise me and my brother, everything. But but okay, so would it been okay if your mother sacrificed everything and he just did what he wanted to do? Would I'm, that have been better? Because that's what I get from it. It's like to me, it's like I'm, just because he's a male. And he chose to do the right thing by his child. Does that really make that a sacrifice? I mean, because it's, it's, it's different because how I, I salute every single male single father in the world because I know that shit was a choice. That shit was a given. But it, shit it goes all to, should be a choice. If you have a child, it should be a choice to change your life for your no, child. No, it shit hits the fan. Who is that? Who is responsible for that baby? Always a mother. If anything, happens, it should be both parents. That's I that's believe the so issue. Too. It should be both parents. It should be a 50 50 split. I believe and that's so what too. makes things hard for single mothers because the father look at it as, oh, well, you the mom, so you should deal with it. In 2021, I totally agree with you. But in the fucking late 80s and early 90s, when I was a kid, my, my dad had no obligation to us. No, none. He did. He was your father. Well, he could have left just like all the rest of the uh, okay, people. Okay, but that, uh, but, he, but he but you know he chose to be a father like he's supposed to be. So is that a sacrifice or is that doing your fatherly duty? Yeah, that is doing your fatherly. So duty. I can't. So you can't say doing a fatherly duty is a sacrifice because doing a motherly duty can we really call that a sacrifice? No, it's your cause, child because he didn't have to. He didn't have so to. he didn't have to be a good father. No, he did not. So he could have been a deadbeat father. Yes, he could have. And so we but, all know there's a lot but of those. choosing to be a good father is a sacrifice. So yeah. that means no, no, choosing no, no, to no. be a good mother will be a sacrifice. No. Choosing to be a father and choosing to be a good father is two totally different things. Mm -hmm. My dad didn't just choose to be a father. He chose to be a fucking great father. Mm -hmm. But, and he tried his best with everything. He gave everything. And when I say everything, I do mean everything. He gave everything he possibly could to be because a great father. Because he was playing two roles. And that's how it is with single mothers. That's no, why he I wasn't playing two roles. Because so, my mom came in the, uh, in the picture and she did a great job raising us too. That is my, you hear me saying that is my mom. Because that is my mom. Because mm -hmm. she was there since I was a kid. That is, that is my mother. You know what I'm saying? I have a birth. I have the birth mother. Then I have my mom mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's two different things one was there 24 7 with my dad raising me so it's a different thing she sacrificed things mm -hmm. she now sacrificed that me. that i can see being a sacrifice because those are your step kids this is this man that you love his his children and you decide to put things on hold or whatever but still that it's a it's a whole different story i mean it's weird when you talk about moms and dads All right, on to the next subject. We on segment two, so all right. What what else? What else we got on the? All right, so we're gonna go back to David. So 
once David was reconnected to Lisa, they went to like the little, uh, not bowling alley. They went to like skating, little skating ring or whatever. Um, they pretty much had like the perfect date. They connected, bonded. So let me ask you, what was your um, best first online date? <sighs> I honestly barely remember any first date. <laughs> Oh, wow. I mean, I, I'm serious. I mean, okay, I remember one day we went to the bowling alley. Okay, and was it the best? I mean, I like the girl. I don't care about that. What did y'all do? Like, what did you do to make it memorable? Well, I mean, we bowled and stuff like that. You know, I, I beat the shit out of her in bowling because... I, I mean, I didn't know how good I was in bowling, but it turns out I'm pretty good. So I'll beat her down in bowling. Oh, God. Because I'm a competitor. So I can't, I'm not finna sit there and just let you win. <laughs> oh, my I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. I'm not finna sit there and let you win. So, yeah, I beat the shit out of her bowling on the first date. I'm sorry. But, yeah. So after that, we went. We drove around. And, um... We, we parked outside of like a little club or something like that. And we sat there and talked until I took her back to the bowling alley where her car was. And yeah, she drove off and I could see this auto, but I barely in it remember any of my first dates. Barely. You need more memorable first dates. Well, they. <laughs> you need better first dates, yo. I mean, shit. I mean, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Even my kid's mom, I don't even remember. Oh, my God. I don't. I don't. Let me tell you. So, my first best date or whatever, however you want to say it, uh, it was this older gentleman that I met. And we had met at a local grocery store. I want to make sure he was real. You know, you got to fact check people. Make sure they the real person, you know. But we met. You know, we talked a little bit. I'm like, eh, he won't kill me. So I got in his car and he drove me like, I don't know, probably like 20 minutes down the road somewhere. Wait, how, how long did it take you to realize this man <laughs> is not crazy and he ain't going to kill you? I need to know this. Well, we I sat in his car for like 10 minutes and I'm like. 10 minutes? Yeah. And like, that's, that's your. Because <laughs> I was like, look, he's not giving me no serial killer vibes. He good. So I was like, okay, we're going we'll go in your car. I'm going, I ain't got to follow you. We'll go in your car. But uh, he was really, he was really sweet. And we went to this little Italian restaurant and it was really nice because he he remembered from our conversation that I love Italian food. So that's where he went to take me to this little spot. And we went there. It was, you know, the food was great. We ate. Um, and then he took me to his house. He had a very nice home. Um, we went there. We listened to dance hall. Like he I don't think he really understood what dance hall was. But at that point, I was in love with dance hall. Well, he's you say he was Italian? No, he no, he was I forgot what he was, but he was he was an older white guy. Oh, okay. Um, so so he didn't know nothing about Ponderilla. <laughs> Ponderville. He know nothing about that shit. He just thought you did. <laughs> <laughs> because I was in love with that at that point. Because that I had just recently found out about Alkaline and Vicartel, and I was like, Oh my god, I love these guys. Like, they're so cute. Oh my god. Okay. And so, you know, we just listened to music or whatever, and we were just chill. We just chilled at his house or whatever. And I just felt really comfortable. And he didn't murder me, obviously, because I'm here today. But it was just, it was really chill, really cool. I feel like that was my first, my best first online date or whatever. But, I mean, I look, look, guys, y'all need to make sure you vet the people that you meet online. Because that is serious. There are crazy people out here. Trust and believe. There are crazy people. So you always need to make sure you kind of do like a little online check on these people. If you got the money, kind of run a background check on these people. Make sure they really who they are. But in my case, I was lucky. Um, he's a real sweet gentleman. Um, like I can only say good things about him. Like nothing negative or whatever. So. Well, let me let me ask you this. What's worse? What's worse? David with his VHS dating service or the online dating today? Okay, in what aspects of being worse? I mean, 
as far as I mean, you're a female, so what's what's worse as far as knowing do you even like that person or security cut uh and, and security? Because remember, David only had 30 seconds. Remember, he tried to record right, a video. Right, right, right. 30 seconds to record his video. Yeah, uh, for his profile. So he had 30 seconds, which females have more because there's a lot more dudes doing that. Right. Uh, well, looking through the David service, you know, there's a lot more dudes trying to go through that and then, than females. Right. So the females have more time. So, which is, I want to say, easier, safer, and all that. Um, who 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 had it better, David or us today with the online? I think David. I I feel like now online dating is really online dating now is pretty much booty call. I'm just being one hundred because my favorite dating site used to be POF. I don't know if y'all heard of that, but POF used to be my shiznick. <laughs> Plenty of things. Yes, that was my go to place. It's but, like I'm lonely. POF.com. But I'm saying POF is is stands for plenty of fish mm -hmm. plenty of fish is what almost every dude is say is plenty of fish in the sea no so no i met some good guys fun. off of there i met shit. some good people shit why you think people start putting a little prostitution sites no, on that cause, no because that's how they ruin it because p look plf used to be legit because i really met some really good males off plf shout out to anybody met off plf just saying Oh but anyways, <laughs> but I met some really good people on POF. Like to me, that was the most authentic people. But then they got to a point where POF was just guys looking to have sex. And I'm like, yo, you need to go to online booty call for that. Like, no, 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 you messing up POF. But now pretty much is what it is. So I don't even go on it. I mean, what I mean, you don't think it was dudes back then? David is an anomaly. He actually was a psychopath. <laughs> that's looking for love on a VHS tape. Like, you think back then it was a, you think the Zodiac Killer they look at these tapes <laughs> like, come on, bro, like, come on. No, because I, I, right like, I feel like David's service was actually matching him because they were looking at the tapes and sending it to people who they felt like maybe that could be your match. Because, no, I thought about going through a match service, like an actual match, serv a match that you service. That you got to pay money for? Yeah, yeah. I thought about it because I'm like, maybe these people could find my Mr. Perfect or Mr. Okay for right now, <laughs> for the moment, perfect person. I mean, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, shoot, because what I'm doing on these dating sites ain't working. Yeah. Like, this mess is crazy. Well, as far as what I think, I think David probably have it. Well, no, I wouldn't say David had it easy because he's still a guy. But back then, that dating service that they was using with the VHS tapes, it probably was a little easier and a little bit safer because probably a lot of people didn't have the money to pay for it. Because remember, they were paying money. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. pay for money for every tape. POF and Tinder and all that shit, you ain't got to. You ain't got to pay no money to meet these people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, so. and it does make it say, um, and I do want to put a disclaimer. Out. I am not promoting any dating site at this moment because, like I said, the dating sites that I used to do back in the days, I have came across that they are pretty much just booty call services now. So I what, am not promoting any of them. What dating site is not booty call service right now? I'm just saying, like, I, I tried all of them. Okay, I, Cupid, POF. No. Scout. That's why I met the older guy from. I met him from Scout. I, I you tell heard you, of that? No, I haven't heard. It was an app. There's mm -hmm. a day service app. Mm -hmm. I ain't never heard of that. And I heard it almost all over. But, I heard <laughs> it. but I'm, I'm saying, what the only dating service that's out right now that is not booty call ones are the free ones. All the ones you got to pay for that uh, that cost money for you to be on. They are these are people like really looking for a relationship. Like somebody told me, I won't say who, but somebody told me about a dating a dating app. And I know this sounds crazy. It's called millionaire.com. So people go on here, mm -hmm. whether you male or female, mm -hmm. you go on here and you look for millionaires, like people that got money that want to meet people. Mm -hmm. Now, how even though you're gonna pay for it. More than likely is I don't think it's free. I haven't looked at it myself. I just heard about it. But 
and whether you pay for it or not, you going in there and you searching for somebody with money. So how do you know that that person, whether you admit, if you a millionaire, how you know that person not trying to take full advantage of you? Well, you got to think about it. If I'm on a site that says millionaire.com, the first thing that comes to my mind is people come out here because I got money. So anybody that's looking for me is under priest and they know that I got money. Because I'm sure they vet these people to a point that I, mean, I would think. Like, so if it's free. And it's millionaire.com. You're a millionaire. How you know that person that you meet on millionaire.com of millionaire.com is going to take you seriously? You can't. You can't really say that because they're looking for sugar babies. Because that's the thing. A lot of these sites are kind of. They're like they're like unseen. They're they're unseen uh, uh, description. It's like if I'm going on a site millionaires.com, then I know I'm about to be somebody's sugar baby. So. Pretty much, we already know what it's about to be. What the kind of transaction is about to happen. So, because if I was looking for love, I don't care if you're a millionaire. So, ain't no point me going this kind of site. But for me to be up here, and for this guy to be paying money, then he already used to paying money looking for love or conversation or whatever he's looking for. And I'm sure going more than both of those. Yeah. So, he already know what the game is. Obviously, I'm on this site, so I already know what the game is. Yeah. But, um... I have read something. I forgot what the site was called, but it was something similar to that. That if you had like a school, like email, you were, you know, your um, your uh, registration or whatever was free. Your payment was free. Remember that was Facebook at the beginning. You had to have a a college email, email. Mm-hmm. at first to get on Facebook. Then they opened up Facebook to everybody. But this a dating site though. This recently, this was a dating site. It was recently because it was like Texas. Had the highest amount of college emails for this site. I cannot remember the name of the site, but it was pretty much something along the lines of that or whatever you're talking about. So, well, I guess dating sites are becoming more profitable and get more people on, on the actual site because within the last, I want to say, no, I say it's been over a little bit over a year. Facebook has gotten a, a dating site. Mm, yes. Facebook got dating sites, so I I think that's just to get people on there and stuff like that. You know, Facebook always got some tricks up their sleeve. But you got to think about it. Everybody's looking for love. I mean, if you haven't found it, you're looking for it. Ain't nobody out here like, nah, I don't want love. I disagree with love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody out here looking for it. Yeah. Well, you know, some people, they found it and they want their own kind of love. Do you, you know, believe in love? Yes, I believe in love. Uh huh. Really? Yes. Tell the ladies out here you believe in love. Of course, I believe in love. What kind of question is that? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Have See, you found love yet? A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Do you have love right now? What do I love somebody or do I do I have somebody that loves me? No, no. I don't care about who loves you. Are you in love with someone right now? The ladies want to know. <sighs> Uh, See, I ladies, mean, never mind. No fuck. Uh, don't mess with him. Don't mess with. Him. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like it's difficult. It's complicated. Yes, it's complicated. As they say on Facebook, like, it's complicated. The, like the boy David, he found it. I I believe me personally. Just I'm third per third party. He found love instantly because he completely match up with this girl. Mm-hmm. You know, she's same interests, same thing. Everything was perfect. Right. And you know how do you have any idea how hard that is to find? When somebody finds love, do you know how much somebody is settling? They settling. Yeah. They, a lot of people settle for for love. Like that, that's just what it is. Yeah, true. You know, you gotta you gotta give and take. My dad always told me, he was like, You think love is real love? He's like, no, love ain't love ain't really what you think. Love is like we mar- want to get marriage you want marriage mm-hmm. love is you being able to eat that person's shit and those are his words exactly can you eat that person's shit and can they eat your shit and shit now i don't mean actual shit but i mean they bullshit every day getting on your fucking nerves driving you fucking nuts and doing all this crazy shit can you sit there and can you take take it Mm-hmm. So what I took it as, can you take the good and the bad of this relationship? Because the relationship is going to be good sometimes, but the majority of the time, it's probably going to be bad. Well, and can well you I don't know about the majority. 
I mean, I should hope it's majority positive, but there will you be bad times. Hope, but it's going to be bad times. Right. And no bad times could be minor. And no bad times can be fucking big. And mm-hmm. But can you deal with that shit? And if you see yourself, you can't deal with, with all of it, the good and the bad, and all the shit that goes on in this fucking relationship. If you can't deal with it, then you shouldn't be with this person mm-hmm. for life. Cause I only play. I never been married, but I only play and get married one time. And when I say death do us part, I really do mean that shit. You know, when I got married, they didn't say that. And so I was like, okay. they didn't say that. No, he didn't say that. I got married at a courthouse. They didn't say that. So I was like, okay, so I ain't got to kill him. No, they probably don't say in the courthouse. They probably don't say to death do you part because they know this motherfucker might be here for murder if we say that shit. It's like death do us part. So I got killed this motherfucker to get out of this relationship. <laughs> Fine, you ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Say less, motherfucker. All right. So <laughs> Horrible, bro. <laughs> All right. So what else we got? All right. What was your most notorious reason for canceling a date? Because uh, remember, David, he canceled his second date with Lisa. Um, he was like, "Oh yeah, my mom's not feeling good." Or something like that. But that was bullshit. It was. Because he he wanted said, to spend time with Andy. After the first day, he went downstairs and started <laughs> watching that damn video. <laughs> and, and, he, and he started trying to explain to his fake TV screen homeboy. That was his friend, not fake. Man, that was... Man, come on. <laughs> come that on, was his bro. friend, bro. Come on, bro. We're going to do this. Come on, bro. That, that man was not real. He was on the TV <laughs> screen. He never met this man, a real person, never shook his hand. So he was fake. So he he canceled a real life date with Lisa, who got the meats. By the way, she had oh the my god, bro. she had the meats, bro. I don't know that girl had she had a little ass right there. Anyway, I hope y'all watch this movie, yo. <laughs> <laughs> she had a little junk in the trunk right there for a little white girl. But I'm just saying, she he canceled his date with her, her second date, or the supposedly the woman of your dreams. You were so happy in the car after the first date. But now you're going to cancel a date for your little Renner Pal VHS TV homeboy to sit there and play cards with? Y'all playing goldfish? And he say, do you have any fours? And he's like, one is better than nothing. And you ain't got no fours in your hand, bro. Hey, goldfish is a very competitive game now. Bro, not with the TV. <laughs> not with the TV. You gonna play with, how you going to play that game with that man again for the second time? You ain't even got no fours in your hand. He's like, one is better than nothing. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Come on. That shit was tripping to me. But he canceled his date to play with him. You know what I'm saying? Which makes no sense to me. It's ridiculous. But, all right, to your question, the most notorious excuse that dudes use for canceling a date, well, maybe not the second date, but just any date, Yes, I'm hanging with the homies. Please, you let a man tell me that. I'm like, bet you we won't be talking no more. I mean that that, but sometimes it's true. You know what I'm saying? But don't get me wrong. I wouldn't if a girl that I'm I'm with, I wouldn't cancel like our pre-existing plans with. Like mm-hmm. we got plan. Me and my girl got plans for the weekend. I'm not gonna cancel a date that I told you. Like yeah, on, it's Monday, Saturday we going. Such and such, and do doing this. All right, what have you? And my, and my homie called me on Friday, mm-hmm. uh, Sunday, uh, Saturday morning, and tell me, yeah, we gotta go out and all this shit. I'm like, nah, bro. What if your boy come to you like, I got these Kanye tickets from bro? No, I don't fuck with Kanye like that. What? What? Who do you like? Uh, co- college dropout. Uh, you know whatever. What old, old Kanye, we might be talking about some, but <laughs> new Kanye, we can't do that. We call that. But Drake tickets, I'm. How many you got, bro? Uh, okay. He got right. no just for you and him. You and him. Front row. Front row. What, what excuse you going to make? How much I need to buy them shits No, 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 no. You coming. Like, I, I'm not selling it. You got to come with me. You got to come with me. I, what you going to tell her? Because my thing would be, what you going to tell her? I, I can't. I can't. No, yes, you can, can't. man. Y'all do the same stuff every week. You do the same stuff every week. What you gonna tell her? I can't. Come on, man. You can't miss this. You can't miss it, yo. The, well, okay, okay, Drake, okay, okay. Drake, Drake. I'm Drake. a I'm a I'm a it's Drake, it's Drake tickets. <laughs> so I know they're expensive. All right. So 
depending on the female that I'm with, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't cancel cancel uh, cancel on her. Like I can't do it because depending on the female I'm with, she would probably never forgive me for that shit. She would always oh bring yeah, that shit especially up. when she find out. Yeah, that I I canceled our date. Uh, our date just go to a drink concert <laughs> with, with my fucking homeboy. No, I can't. Do, I can't do that. I mean, depending on how long we together and how deep this relationship is and all this shit like that. Now, if it's a second date and I'm like David, it's a second date. Fuck yeah, we're going to that drink concert. Oh my god, really? It's a second date. He met his soulmate on the first. Uh, he met his soulmate on the first, but yeah. She ain't going nowhere. She like me too. So, <laughs> so I'll see you tomorrow, bitch. <laughs> like, when I say, ladies, stay away from him. What did I just tell y'all? Stay away from him. I'm just saying. Uh-huh. I'm just saying. But remember, he did end up calling her because on that same night, he canceled the date with her. His mom ended up going missing and going on this marvelous adventure. Yeah, she went on a little walk. <laughs> and he ended up calling her anyway to come help him. So he didn't have to cancel the fucking date. You see what I'm saying? Well, he didn't know his mom would go missing because that's the only reason why he called her. No, he didn't go his mom uh, go missing, but he canceled the date not for his mom. That's just the excuse that he gave her. Right, right, he right. He canceled right. the date for because Andy. his fucking fake ass friend. You know what I'm saying? That's why this man is a goddamn psychopath. <laughs> you got a girl out here that want to be with you and she got the meats. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You got a thick ass white girl that want to be with you, and she and she trying to come over and spend time with you. You could have brought her over there. You could have brought her to your mom's house. Like how many how many females you think was going to accept that? Mm, true. You that's, know what what I'm I'm that's what I'm saying. She accepted him for who he was, and at his point where he was. Yeah. So like he hit the jackpot, but he did, but he fucking blew it. Right fucking blew it so now this man end up he dismissed uh, when she came over after she helped with his mom you know they started kissing and this man <laughs> this man had a premature ejaculation <laughs> off of some kisses so that's how you know he ain't really been with no girls before yeah, like at least not like that it's been a so long time <laughs> he, he, I, I guess so so he sat on the remote and shit like that and Andy come on the screen and start laughing at him and shit like that. But that was just the placement of the VHS. They started laughing at him and it's like, oh, he's so pathetic and whatever, whatever. So he ended up kicking the girl out and dismissing her because of the way he felt in that situation. You know what I'm saying? But later on, he 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 tries to kill the girl. Yeah, he went cray cray at towards the end. Um David was just doing too much, all because of his feelings for Andy, this this guy on this VHS tape. And me personally, I feel like Andy was a real, real spirit or whatever you want to call it on that VHS tape. Um, Because when you lonely, let me tell you, when you lonely and somebody brings you out of that depression... Like, that's your bud because it's like, yo, you took me from a spot that no one else could. And I felt like Andy felt like he owed something. Not Andy. I keep calling Andy. Mm -hmm. David felt like he owed something to Andy. But realistically, Andy wasn't a tangible person. So he should have just continued his life with his real people, his mother, Lisa, you know, people he can actually touch, feel that had true emotions, not this weird VHS tape. Yeah, he got caught up. Yeah, he definitely. Got, he definitely got caught up, but I don't see, like, everybody's been lonely at some point in their life. You know what I'm saying? I've been lonely. You've been lonely. You know, but I don't know many people that's been that lonely. I know. I've been lonely a lot. But have you been that lonely to find a friend that's not even really your friend. This is a VHS tape that you met, that you found at a video store, and then you start talking to like this motherfucker is your best friend. That that shit is crazy to me. Yeah. That shit is crazy. I don't think I ever been that low, you know, <laughs> to the point where it's like I don't have nobody else. Let me talk to a tape. Yeah. I don't know. What well, is that to say? Like listen to little slow songs, like listen to old school songs, and being like. 
That's right, Marvin. You tell him. That's right, Cisco. You got it. Cisco. Is that the same thing? Cisco. Oh, listen. I love me some Cisco. I'm just saying, anybody know him? I love him. And I met you, Cisco. You might not remember. I met you in Fayetteville, North Carolina. You came and did a concert. It was like genuine, some other people oh, there, but man. I'm just letting you know that I met you for real. Oh, like Jesus. I ever took a I ever took a picture with you. You probably don't remember me, but I did. <laughs> just well, saying. It's not the same when people sit here and singing uh singing R and B songs. You can hit sit here and sing incomplete for my Cisco all the all fucking day. Which is my favorite song, guys. Just saying. <laughs> oh, I'm just <laughs> you can sit here and say that shit all day, but you not pulling up a video of some fake guy well, what's the difference? and talk to you. Because he having full-blown conversations and he trying to make it seem like he know where you're coming from. I've been talking from. to Cisco. Bright lights. That's, <laughs> <the best ever. laughs> That's right, Cisco. <laughs> Everything but, in the world. But, man. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I be talking to him. Yeah, you be talking Especially to him. Especially Bobby. But it ain't no... You ain't altering your life because of the conversation. Right, right. Oh, I got a date with Cisco you tonight. Right. That's crazy to me. And the fact that it's Cisco is ridiculous. I anyway, love me some Cisco. Look at that one nigga got pl- platinum hair. Uh, what let me tell you? That's Mr. Don't, 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 don't. Don't talk my boo. I love him. <laughs> Chill out, bro. I love Chill me out. some Cisco. Chill out. All right, give me one, one last question. What else we got? Um, I think we covered everything. Yeah, I think we kind of pretty much went over everything for the most part. Okay, so uh, well, let's go over what we think about the end, the end of the movie. Now, at the end of the movie, Andy goes crazy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He get he end up pushing his mom down the stairs because I guess he feel like she was a fucking nuisance by the uh, by the end of that. He felt like she took his friend away because he she was like cutting up his videotape, like oh this tape sucks. Like that's my tape, mama. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> I mean, I mean, she cut off his tape. He went and found another one. He was about to go crazy on people at the store. He came back, and from the from the looks and from the feels of the movie, I felt like he David felt like uh, that Andy gave him my this idea. Like we don't need her. So it was another part. Where he was talking about the girl, oh, yeah. But now he he put that towards his mother. Yeah, Andy Andy was the one who kind of brainwashed him, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he so he pushes mom down the stairs. Then, Lisa walks in, and um, he try, he tries to fucking kill her, and she ends up stabbing this man in the chest, and he fucking dies. So, yeah. right I mean, in front of Andy, and Andy right. pretty much like. And said his goodbyes. Like, <laughs> oh, well, didn't think you would die so soon. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, well, David, yeah. bye. Well, I see you saying, Pam. It's <laughs> been it's been great. You know what I'm saying? So I I mean, I don't know, man. I I like I said, I think he was a psychopath from the beginning. Mm. So blessing, uh, lesson or cursed. Blessing, lesson or cursed. <sighs> you go first, because I'm about to go off. Uh, I would say this movie kind of sucked. I'm just be honest. Like I did watch it like a couple of times, but it ain't nothing I would tell somebody to watch. To be honest. Well, so what? What is it? Blessing, listen. I'm curse. gonna say curse. This is my first curse, guys. Okay, definitely. I'm I'm glad we agree on something because I thought <laughs> you were about to say it was a lesson. Nah, like you learned something. I learned from, from this, right. <laughs> and it wasn't great. All right. uh, a blessing, or oh, because oh yeah, you got to. Do right with relationship. I'm glad you say that because I agree. This this movie was a little bit of a curse. Even though I appreciate the art of filmmaking no more than anybody, I appreciate the art of filmmaking. But th- I feel like this movie was a curse because you've seen that shit since day one. They it wasn't much progression for this character to turn crazy. You know what I'm saying? He was already fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. So I guess that's the end of this podcast. Next week, what we got? The, the movie streaming on Hulu called Tyrell. Yes, guys. Check it out beforehand. And I hope y'all are enjoying the podcasts. Yep. I hope shows, you're enjoying it. Episodes. Stay up. Twinkleberry.com. DJ Twin 2. Uh, at Instagram and Facebook. 